one of the things that I wanted to show to people was how to build a virtual reality cockpit uh, very simply for use with computer gaming. Uh, this is the kind of thing you would use for flight sims or perhaps my personal favorite, which is Mac Warrior. Um, the central part of this cockpit fe features the SciTech X65F, uh, which is a pretty excellent control system. We can also, if you want, you, if you prefer the Logitech brand, uh, you could use uh, the new Logitech Force Feedback uh, hands-on throttle and stick along with the rudder pedals. My setup doesn't actually include any kind of uh, way to mount the rudder pedals and uh, part of the feature I liked about the SciTech setup was that the uh, force sensing joystick allows for three axes of motion and then that mitigated the need for a rudder pedal setup. However, something like this could be done uh, with just about uh, any, any uh, advanced level joystick uh, and throttle system. One of the features that was lacking for a very, very long time with these kinds of systems is bolt holes. And that's a pretty obvious thing. I built my first virtual reality cockpit about 14 years ago uh, using the Thrustmaster items, uh, Thrustmaster hands-on throttle and stick, including the F-16 flight stick, the TQS throttle quadrant system, and the RCS rudder control system. Uh, unfortunately, I had to build special brackets, which were very difficult to build out of wood, and uh, then insert, slide them inside um, those mountings in order to get a nice firm mounting for it. Fortunately, after uh, about 15 years, or 14 years actually, uh, both Logitech and SciTech have finally figured out that these things need bolt holes. And that was something that drew me to it because easy mounting um, leads to better gameplay and, and more fun for people. Now one of the complaints that people have about the SciTech X65F is the fact that the throttle when it comes out of the box is extremely tight and indeed it is. Also if you get one of the early models there's a tension uh, hex, hex uh, driver tension bolt underneath and it was over tightened at the factory so if you attempt to loosen it according to the instructions it's likely that you will strip out the bolt uh, I did that immediately the day I got it and was unable to loosen the tension um, however I haven't returned it for warranty service because the moment I got it mounted this thing works properly and the stiff throttle is actually an excellent bonus for using this particular item um, anyway, what I wanted to go over was how I very easily mounted these things and just built a VR cockpit that I can roll around my living room. Obviously, we don't want this thing sitting in front of the computer all of the time. So I want to do some close-ups here and show you a few things that uh, were done in order to make it more serviceable. <clears throat> so this blackboard at the bottom is actually just the door off of a shelving unit that I paid probably around 40 US dollars for. I then took the remainder of the shelving unit and um, cut the shelves and some of the side panels into pieces, into even pieces, and used them to stack them up so that I could uh, mount my throttle and my joystick. Um, basically, these bottom panels are all just simply screwed down. Uh, you just use a drill to screw them in and some long screws. And then these last top panels, one thing I wanted was the ability to adjust the position. Uh, so I could adjust the height by adding more panels, but I wanted to be able to move the joystick forward or backward and the throttle, which needs to be at least for my comfort, put much further forward than the joystick. So of course what I did was purchase a large amount of sticky back Velcro and you can see by the amount of force I'm putting on here that that's actually pretty sturdy. So uh, I don't really have uh, any difficulty once the Velcro has been attached uh, with this thing moving around. So I used a very large amount. It probably total for this unit I have four to five full meters of sticky back Velcro involved. Um, now one disappointment that I think some of the SciTech owners had and the people who purchased this unit was that there was a base plate, a metal base plate designed for the user to put 
sticky back Velcro on and then mount it to a desk or a tabletop and SciTech unfortunately only included one base plate and one set of screws uh, in order for the users to do that. What I found however was that once I had drilled holes in my baseboard here, I had four holes uh, that I drilled, um, I actually didn't need those base panels and I didn't really want to attach the Velcro to the base panel anyway because I wanted something sturdier that this would attach to. And additionally, even though they only included four bolts, what I'm finding is that I don't need any of the bolts that were included, uh, so especially since the ones that were included were not long enough. All I did was take a set of long zip ties. There are two zip ties that are held together here, and I just pulled them through and cut off the ends, and pulled them through here and cut off the ends. So in addition, it's actually, if I need to remove this from the plate for some reason, which so far I haven't had to, then all I need to do is cut the zip ties, and when I go to fix it, I just put them back on. So it's really firmly mounted, and uh, you, you will be surprised by how well the Velcro will mount. Let's move over to looking at mounting the throttle as well. Um, <clears throat> The throttle has a little bit of a similar issue. It's also held on by Velcro. Now, one thing you might notice is the bottom board under here. I think I need to turn that so you can get a better view. Here we go. This is the, this is the top board. The one under, I had to push forward a little bit because when I had it all the way back here, this amount of leverage was pulling on the Velcro and actually it was falling off from time to time. Uh, so if you happen to be like me and you need to mount your throttle further forward, then this is the way I, well, a way I suggest for doing it. This just turned out to be very, very easy for me. Uh, and in case you were wondering about this particular item, the entire unit connects to the computer simply with one USB cable, which supplies both data and power between the item and uh, the computer. The throttle down here has three cables. Um, one is the USB that goes directly into the PC. That's it right there. Another one attaches to the expansion unit and this has uh, buttons for adjusting your tension as well as extra programmable buttons that you might want to use for controls. And this of course is expandable if you want to spend even more money on an already expensive system. You can add I believe up to five more of these panels which will give you extra functionality. Although what I found is that for whatever games that I have programmed, and I'm not a flight sim enthusiast, uh, what I found is that I really don't need anything more than what was already supplied in the basic package. And then there is one more cable which you can see snakes around. This comes down, it snakes around. Uh, I've got it going across the seat. Just some Velcro holding it on and this of course goes up to the joystick itself right there that plugs in with the PS2 connector. So the entire system is actually pretty nice on the wiring, not great. One thing that I do find that happens is I occasionally have calibration problems simply because this connector has become loose and once in a while this thing, maybe it's because I've got the wiring rolled up this way, but this, this cable just sort of falls off every once in a while. Uh, there's very nice action on this throttle. It pulls, uh, it's actually pretty hard to pull, but once it's mounted down, that becomes a very comfortable and nice feature. Uh, if you've read about this joystick, this joystick is currently a unique one in the market because it, the joystick itself barely moves. The stick doesn't actually rotate on some kind of axis or um, have any springs in it. It has some force sensing things in it which allow it to uh, detect the amount of pressure that you put on the stick across three axes, which is uh, actually a very nice feature. And I was originally buying it because my right wrist sustained damage uh, when I was a teenager. And uh, I have a problem with wrist fatigue when I use traditional joysticks. And indeed, using this stick has actually reduced my wrist fatigue. Uh, some of you may be intrigued by the seat itself. The seat is not particularly comfortable, but I did uh, 
managed to purchase this in Korea. One advantage in Korea is the traditional style of living involves sitting around on the hardwood floors. Uh, there's no carpet, which is a godsend. I think carpet is one of the stupidest inventions that anyone ever made, at least wall-to-wall -wall carpet. All it does is uh, get dirty and prevent you from using wheels in your home. Anyway, this kind of floor chair is readily available. And once again, I simply have long lines of Velcro holding it to that black door unit. Now, the last thing that you're going to see down here is cart. And I just salvaged this out of the garbage. And I was rather surprised because I'm sure as you noticed, I'm a pretty big guy. I weigh over 100 kilos. And I was pretty worried that the cheap plastic wheels on the bottom of this cart would crack the moment I sat down. However, uh, as you saw from the beginning of the video, as long as I evenly distribute my weight when I sit down, I actually have no issues with it. So the nice thing is I've got a wheeled cart and I can simply roll this entire unit across my living room any way that I want. So of course I can just play and uh, then when I'm done playing, I can move the game unit out of the way so that my wife can use the computer normally or I can use the computer normally. And it works out very, very nice. So anyway, uh, that's the scoop I have on the SciTech X65F and how to build a cockpit. Uh, actually, these items were relatively inexpensive as far as the shelving unit and the chair and the tools I needed to do it. I spent about hmm, US dollars, approximately 60. And this rolling cart, if you had to buy one new, my guess is you could find something similar for about 20 US dollars. Uh, in my case, I just salvaged it out of the garbage. Um, but of course, if you build your own and you actually have access to better tools than I do, one thing that I would recommend is actually starting with a bucket car seat, bolting it down to a frame that's going to roll across the floor, and having a couple of side panels that rise up higher so that uh, you can have an easier time or a nicer time, a more comfortable sitting position. I would love to incorporate a bucket car seat, but at present, I don't have room in my home for anything that complicated, nor the tools or ability to do it. And I also haven't been able to find anywhere to sell me just a car seat. But your local junkyard, uh, if you're in the U.S. or Canada or probably most of the Western world, should have no difficulty locating a nice, comfy bucket seat for you uh, that you can get at a reasonable price used. Um, of course, that will require more work in building higher arms. One thing to notice here, too, is that I have how many boards? One, two, three, four boards here, but the throttle itself I felt needed to be higher, so I actually have five boards here, and I'm considering adding one more because I have a feeling that I would like it to go up a little bit higher. And it does sit considerably further forward than the joystick. If I move this to the side here, you can see there's the joystick and the throttle is sitting several inches further forward, at least two inches, maybe three. I haven't measured. And of course, I don't need to measure because the Velcro allows me to adjust it uh, forward and backward in any way.